Hey folks, in this video, we're going to learn how to create and debug JavaScript applications with Visual Studio Code. So let's go. All right. So to get started, as usual, we need a folder for our project. So we'll call this JavaScript app. Now you may only start with one file, but most projects have multiple files and you need a folder. So how do we open this in Visual Studio Code? There's a couple of ways, but one way is to just drag this and drop it right onto VS Code, and now your folder is open here. All right, let's add a file inside. We'll call it index.js, and let's write some JavaScript. So let's do, because we really have to, according to the laws of the universe, create a hello world first and foremost. All right, zoom in a little bit. So how do we run this? Well, hmm. Browsers know how to run JavaScript, right? Okay, well, we could try to run it in a browser. If you watched the last video on how to create and preview your first HTML page, we use this live preview extension to do that. So let's open up the, the server here for live preview and uh, click on index.js. And hmm, it's not quite what we wanted. It's just showing us the contents of the JavaScript file. Um, okay, well, that's that's a kind of a problem. We don't want to actually run it in the browser because we need to put it in an HTML page to do that. And um, we don't want to do that. We actually want to run it from the terminal here. So how do we run this JavaScript file from our own terminal? Well, to do that, you're going to need something called Node.js. Node is how your computer runs JavaScript, and you have to install it. Your computer actually doesn't know how to execute JavaScript from the terminal until you install Node. You can get the current version, which has the latest features, but most people download LTS, which stands for Long Term Support. This is the stable view version, and it says recommended for most users, which is probably you. You are most users. So we once you have it installed, let's check to see if I have it installed. You can do dash dash version, and there it is, 16.13.1. And now let's run this project node index.js, and there we go, hello world. All right, let's do it again with a clean terminal, beautiful. All right, now let's try something a little bit more complicated here because most programs are more complicated than just hello world. And let's write a function which is going to reverse a string. So let's input a value here. And then I'll show you a trick. If you want to reverse a string because JavaScript can't do that out of the box, you can create a new variable called value array and just convert this value to an array by calling the split method on the string, which turns the string into an array and it puts each letter in a different spot in the array. And then what you can do is you can take that array and you can reverse that because arrays do have a reverse method. And then to turn it back into a string, instead of split, we call join and pass an empty string. All right. Let's go ahead and log out this on so console log. And uh, yeah, we'll just call a reverse function and we'll pass in hello world. All right. So let's see how this works and clear our terminal here and we'll run it. <laughs> okay, so that did not work. Why? Well, we got a problem in our function up here somewhere. Now what you may be tempted to do is just say, okay, well, start checking all the things out. You know, what is the value of value here? Okay. And then what is the value of uh, the value array here? But we could do that. Um, however, this is a video on debugging with VS code. So we're going to use the VS code debugger. So let's drop a breakpoint here on the side and run our program again. And it doesn't stop at the breakpoint. <laughs> Why not? Well, because the debugger is not attached. So how do we attach it? I'll show you a couple different ways. So let's go to run and debug. And um, the easiest way is to just do this JavaScript debug terminal. Since, since we have a file, we're running it here locally, we can do the JavaScript debug terminal. And that will create a new terminal instance that looks exactly like the terminal instance that you had before, this one over here. You notice this one took a little bit of time though because it attaches the debugger. So let's run this now. So we're going to run this again, uh, node index.js. And this time you can see that the debugger is attached. Debug panel is open. So we can see the value of value, right? And actually we can uh, add a watch here, put it in our watches. And then this value array isn't set yet. We step over it. Now it's set value array and let's look at it. 
Well, that's not what we wanted. We wanted each letter to be in a different spot in the array, and that's that's where our problem is. So let's disconnect our debugger here, and we can go back and actually, when we call split, we also need to pass an empty string. So tell it to split after each letter, and we do that with this empty string here. All right, let's try this again. And instead of, let me show you a different way to do this, same way to do the different way to do the same thing, excuse me. Uh, let's delete this, but you can just click on this arrow here and say JavaScript debug terminal like this. And that will create a new instance. Different way of doing the exact same thing, but it doesn't require you to open this side panel. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do our thing again. Step over this time, and that's what we wanted, right? That looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and let this thing run to completion by saying continue and look, our string is reversed. Beautiful. Okay, now most applications though are more complex than this even. So let's, let's take this up a notch. Uh, it would be better if we could have the user input a value from the terminal that we could then reverse. So how do we do that? Well, we need to use a, an NPM package then there's one called prompts here that does exactly this. So how do we use this? Well, first, let's go back to VS Code. We need to make this into a, um, into an, into a Node project. We can run it with Node, but it's not quite a project yet. Let's get rid of our debug terminal here, go back to our regular terminal, and let's uh, initialize one. So if we do init-y, just a quick initialization, this will create a package.json for us and make this a node project. There's our name, version, description, all that. And now that we have that, we can install this prompts dependency, this prompts npm package. So let's say npm i. We could say install, but it's quicker if you just do i and then prompts. And then when we go to our package JSON here, you can see that we have prompts and the dependencies. And prompts is in our node modules along with its dependencies. Okay, so let's clap this, collapse this. So how do we use prompts? Well, first we need to import it. So we're gonna say const prompts equals require prompts. You can see VS Code helping us out there. Whoops. And then let's create a main function here. And then we're gonna say uh, result equals async, excuse me, we're gonna await prompts. And then we need to give prompts some information about the prompt that we want it to prompt the user for. So we're going to say, uh, first of all, the type is text. Okay, we want it a string. The name we're going to call value. And the message is going to be, please enter a string to reverse it. Okay. And then lastly, we want to just log out basically this, this statement down here. We can just actually move this up. Uh, like this, but instead of, we need to call reverse, instead of passing in a static string like this, we're gonna say this result.value, because that's what we, we called it value here. Um, we do have one error, and that's here. It says it's gonna tell us that we need to be inside of an async function, and we can fix that by putting an async out to the side here. Okay, so how do we run this? Well, let's take a look at another way to run this with the debugger. And let's click here and let's say create a launch.json file. It's kind of the same as run and debug, but um, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. So for a lot of you, this will work. You can just click run and debug and select node and it will work. It won't work for me because I need to make some configuration changes. If you see this error, you can do what I do. So create this launch.json file. We're gonna say node. And here it allows us to just configure the debugger. And what we need to do is we need to tell it where the runtime executable is. And this is because I'm using something called Node Version Manager. And I didn't install Node directly. It's a different video. Don't worry about it. But if we're going to solve this, what we need to do is just ask and say, well, where is Node installed? It's installed here for me. So let's grab this, collapse our terminal, and then let's just put it here. Okay, so now that we have this, we have this little green button up here that we can click to run, launch and run this application. But that didn't work. Huh. Well, why didn't that work? Well, I don't know. 
let's go ahead and attach a breakpoint here and see. Let's run it again. Hmm. You know what? We didn't actually call the main function. <laughs> let's try that. Let's go to main. There we go. Now that should work a little better. Hmm. It's still not working. What's going on? Well, let's go back to our debug terminal here. So let's open up the There we go. Open up our terminal here. Let's add a debug terminal back. All right, and let's run it from here. Hmm, we're throwing an error. What's the error here? Prompts is not defined. But look, we misspelled prompts. Prompts, prompts. Okay, well, let's try it again. And let's use our debug configuration. Okay, it's running, it's attached, but we can't actually see the terminal. <laughs> and that's because Visual Studio Code by default launches on an internal terminal. And we can change that in our launch configuration here by telling it to use, so let's say it calls it the console, and we'll just tell it to use the integrated terminal, right? Which is this thing here that we've been using. Okay. So run it. Our terminal's open. All right, please enter a string to reverse it. Hello world. Does this work? All right, it works. Perfect. And now you know pretty much everything about how to run and debug JavaScript apps from Visual Studio Code.